All right, everyone, it is episode 29. And I do apologize in advance because there is a lot going on here at present. There's somebody showering to Billy Joel in the background. I heard something climbing on the roof a few moments ago. It's like absolute <laughs> bedlam here, and there's nothing I can do about it. So I do apologize. Do you live at the home alone house? I honestly, no, please. That would be like a pleasure because then I would literally be home alone. No, there's just, you know, when you live with this many people, there's just always something going on. You know, like there's never really, like people ask why I stay up so late. It's because between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. is the only time I can get any peace. So, <laughs> no, you, you, even in LA, when you were by yourself, you would stay up very late. Yeah, no. Are my nipples in? God, I hope so. Um, because we don't have the kind of sophisticated editing equipment to edit them, to edit them out. Um, no, that's true. I am like a night owl. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm like a witch. What can I say? You just said it to me last week. You're like, when are you going to tell people you're a witch? I, th I thought everybody knew, you know? <laughs> you know, it's funny. The other, the other day you brought to me uh, the, the whole love language thing that I've never heard of. But since then, I've heard about it like 30 times. Well, you know why? Because if, if someone, if people are on Bumble, like now all of a sudden Bumble is doing the love language thing. Um, I saw that. That was one of the many times I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. But I've seen like articles online, people just talking to me about it. Very strange. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I tried doing the test and I like my results were like almost inconclusive. Like I have no mm -hmm. idea like what my love language is. It's like because I'm a weird person. It's like give me attention, but don't give me gifts, but don't like everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't get like. Whatever answer I'm, I'm given, what does it mean to me? It doesn't mean anything to me. It's not like if I'm taking a Hogwarts test, it's yeah. cool because I've seen the movies, you know? This That's means more nothing to, to me. You. Yeah. Yeah, I could tell you which Hogwarts house I would be in, but I can't tell you my love language. <laughs> it's which house? I think, by I think the, way. the listeners deserve to know. Yeah, no, it's Slytherin, like for sure. That makes you sense. Know? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I haven't done my test yet because I'm new to Harry Potter, I've just watched all of them. And so I, now I, I got to figure out which which house I am. Oh, you definitely would be like Hufflepuff because you're like a nice person. That's Aww. like your Hufflepuff. Like those are like the nice honorable people. Like they don't like mess around. Like, you know, like they're not too macho, but they're not like mamby pamby. They're just like nice, <laughs> easygoing people. I'd um, like to think I'm a Gryffindor. I could be wrong. I'd like to think that I'm like the the star of the show. I'm the Harry. You could be, I, you could also be Gryffindor. Like that, that works for me. I just, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I'm in Slytherin because I like the bad boys and yeah. I myself am a little bit poorly behaved at times. So I feel like the sorting <laughs> hat would be like, you know, it would be like it did with Malfoy. It would like barely touch my head. And it would be like, on you go to the worst <laughs> one. So what can I get that do? reference now. I get it. You get it. No, I know. Mm -hmm. I just, um. I don't know. I'm like very, I was like trying to think of that the other day. Like what are my, sometimes people call them like shadow aspects and it's like the, your flaws of which I have many, but one mm. that always sticks out and you can attest to this is I'm very vain. Like I'm super vain and you know, it's like all, even just like the little things. Like I hate shooting on a wide angle camera. Like we always have to do that. I hate that. Mm -hmm. um, well, but vain kind of means that you have a self-appreciation. I think you have the opposite when it comes to that, right? Oh, yeah. Like, what is that? Like, body dysmorphi dysmorphic disorder? Yeah, yeah. So I think I feel like if you're vain, you got to love the way you look, right? Can you be vain and hate the way you look? I don't It's like I have, like, a love-hate relationship with the way that I look. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's just like there's, I don't know. I just feel like, like today I feel puffy. Like I feel like the Michelin man because I had a bagel and that's <laughs> life, you know, like that's life when you're slim thick. It's like you have a bagel and it's all gone to hell. Like there's just no margin for error. I'd kill for a bagel right now, by the way. Well, I know it was, I enjoyed it, but now I'm looking at myself and I'm like, oh my God, I look like, you know, I have like elephantitis of the, the face, but, um, <laughs> And that's the other thing. I told you about this, but my cousin came over the other day. My cousin Jack, who's like the sweetest guy in the world, but sometimes he just says like whatever, like the first thing that pops into his head. So I'm walking down the stairs. My cousin Jack comes around the corner and he's like, oh my God, your face looks so thin. Was it always like that or does it just look big on Instagram? 
And I'm like, <laughs> it's the goddamn wide angle camera, you know? And it does. It makes me look like I have like this giant, like, you know, crazy face. I don't know. What well, that's kind of a good thing. They say people in Hollywood should have a, like a big head. And that's, that's a good thing. I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's great. I'm like a talking head now, so I guess that makes sense. But <laughs> and, and there's also a compliment in there saying you look thin. He, he did say you look thin. Right. No, that's why Like I texted his sister about it, and she's like, he means well. And I'm like, no, I mm-hmm. know that he did, but it was just like the, the way he said it. I was cracking up. Does it just look big on Instagram? I was like, oh, my God. And it really kind of does. I will give him that. He does have really good powers of observation, that young Jack. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like, part of me wants to, like, keep going on the trajectory that I'm on, and I want to age like Dolly Parton and just kind of give it, you know, 110% until the day I die. And then there's another part of me that wants to retire, move down to New Orleans, you know, get fat on whiskey and Cajun food and call it a life, right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, you could do both. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I guess you're right. I mean, like... I guess I could just like, like try to keep up appearances and then just go down to New Orleans. That's like the worst of both worlds, though. Honestly. But like, well, like Dolly Parton, she's living over in like Tennessee, I believe, right? Like she she's running Dolly World, I think, right? Yes, which, as you know, is what I want to do in my retirement. I want to have like I want to start a theme park in New Orleans, and you know, and but you want like that, a that you want like a retirement. sexual theme park, right? You don't want like a family friendly thing. No, I'm not like you. I don't want to do like Disney, happy, happy, like, Mm -hmm. no. I want, basically what I want to start is I want there to be like a strip club, but also an alligator sanctuary, and then also like a beignet shop, which are like those really amazing, like they're almost like a Zapola or a Zeppeli, you know, like those fried dough. Amazing. So good. Incredible. Um, So I kind of, and I also want to have a voodoo shop. See, like, at, at, like, the, like once the genius juice starts flowing, it's like you just can't even stop it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like, if somebody came up with another good idea and they were like, oh, why don't you have I'd be like, yeah, add that on. Like, make that another part <laughs> of the Bree Hunter world, you know, experience. I haven't come up with a name yet, but. And You'd also, be like, a great, like, uh, strip club mama, you know, like, or a brothel mama, you know? Yes, you said that to me before. You said, oh, you'd be, make a great madam. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I think he's right. And I feel like that would be the perfect way, you know, for me to age is to be like that type of figure to these young women. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Sorry. My Slack notifications are going off. Um, and I don't even know how to turn them off. Sorry, guys, to everybody <laughs> listening. Um, anyway, what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Me being a brothel runner. Right. Good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Prostitution. Yep. No. Yep. So I, yeah, I feel like that would be a good gig for me. And I kind of see myself as a cross between Dolly Parton and Steve Irwin. Yeah, I mean, you haven't done anything to actually, you know, have that title, but I can see it happening. Um, Wait, hold on one second. I'm literally signing out of Slack so that I don't get the message. What is anymore. Slack? Slack is like the, sorry guys, Slack is the uh, work instant messenger service. And somebody's, uh, like, blowing up my Slack, and I don't have time right now. Obviously, I'm in the middle of being a star, for Christ's sakes. It's called to vibrate, Brie. Come on. Um, Silence. No, it's on the computer. Oh. Uh, um, but I'm sorry. What were you saying before about the... the you, ha- you have no experience, uh, you know, running a theme park or you know, tending alligators. So I don't know where you come off thinking you can do this. I mean, I don't know. Everybody can learn. Like, if the people from Louisiana can do it, I mean, I could do it, you know? <laughs> So that's the problem. You're going to the place where everyone's doing it. You got to run one of these in in L.A. Okay. Well, I think we can run a strip club, club in L.A., but I don't know how we're going to run an alligator sanctuary in L.A. I don't know where we're going to find that. You know, in, but we in can board try. Them. We can try. I just feel like, and, and another reason people would be like, "Oh, why New Orleans?" First of all, land is cheap, and I am also cheap. And <laughs> two, like you know. What do you think of when you think of New Orleans? You think booze, you think boobs, and you think, you know, voodoo witchcraft. So that's the perfect place for me to, to be, mm-hmm. I think. You know, I think about the, the New Orleans Pelicans. Good time. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just think that, like, and also, like, I feel like there's so much debauchery going on down there, like, especially during Mardi Gras, but just at all times, that, like, my debauchery would just kind of blend, you know, we would just kind of be in the fold. It wouldn't be, like... You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't know. I just think it would be a really cool way to die if, like, I was, like, they were, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, she tripped on her four-inch high heels and fell into the alligator sanctuary, and that was the end of her. (laughs) Is that what you want? Yeah, you know me. Like, everything's a big production. I want to go out in a theatrical way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be. How how old are you talking here? I mean, who knows? I mean, like, my family members live, like, I have a lot of, like, older, like, great-grandparents who lived well into their 90s. Um, mm-hmm. But given the way that I drink and just live my life in general, I'm probably going to be, like, more towards, like, 80. More towards <laughs> yeah, the you, lower half of that number. Do you ever think, like, how the hell are you going to be sane when you're, like, 70? Considering, like, I feel like I'm going to lose it, like, when I'm 30. So, like, I don't get how people are so intact when they're, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. I know. Well, I'm already losing it, and I'm 27 years old, you know? Yeah, like that's I'm, what I'm saying. We all are. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I think life expectancy is going to go down. We Well, after 2020, that's for damn sure. Yeah. You know, I definitely think, because we're too stressed out. I mean, yep. yeah, I'm over here. I'm popping fish oil pills you know, I'm already mentally unstable. I, I, I drink. I, I don't really know. You know, I do eat organically, but it's like, who knows at this point? You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to it's going to take to get some longevity in our <laughs> lives. But yeah, I mean, also, would you like to join me in New Orleans? Sorry, I just had like an ADD moment. I, I, I guess it depends where I am in life. Uh, it depends what I'm, I'm going to do, too. What, what type of job are you assigning me? Well, I feel like you're, like, again, like, you're Mr. Walt Disney. So I think you're front of the house. Like, you're definitely a front of the house person. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like, yeah, like, you're up there. Like, you're greeting people. And also, like, God forbid, like, you know, like, a DEA agent shows up. I need you to be out there, you know, Mm -hmm. being all chummy and happy and getting them to leave before they know there's, like, anything illegal going on. Um, Because I also want to make my own liquor. I want to do, like, a moonshine prohibition thing as well. So we'll have that going on the back, you know. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be like so it. much, so we have to come up with a down. name. Though, like, I, like, I mean, Bree Breeland, Breeland is good. Yeah, but Breeland is like so. I feel like we could do better. Like, <laughs> like just... Bree's Wet and Wild Adventure. Like, <laughs> what yeah. are you talking or, about? Or no, how about we could just do like Bree's Bedlam, right? What does that mean? Like, well, Bedlam was like a, like a psych unit back in London in, like, the old times. So it's and you like think people spin. would want to visit this place called Breeze Bedlam? No, but I mean, Bedlam would be, a, you know, the proper way to describe it if you think about it. <laughs> or, like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah or something like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, just kidding. It'll be fun. It'll be, like, all on the up and up and... Uh, oh, and ow, like, by then, like, weed will probably be legal so we can have a dispensary out the back. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm, absolutely. If it's, if it's not illegal, like by now, is is Louisiana illegal weed? I, I don't know what their what their policy is. No, they're not yet, and I have no idea how because they're basically allowing everything else to go on down there, but they don't yeah. want weed. I mean, yeah. if you ever watch like you know shows or anything about Louisiana, it's like it's lawless down there. <laughs> I mean, you know, which again is why I want I want to move down there eventually. But I'm not like let's mm-hmm. not play pretend Louisiana that you're like you know big on the rules here. So why you haven't legalized weed, Al and I will never know. Um, nope. But who knows? I mean, maybe it's on the ballot. I don't you know because you know what it is. Sometimes down there they're like fake conservative. You know, yeah. like they're like they want to pretend like you know they don't like to have fun, but really they do. Mm-hmm. So again, I mean the home to Mardi Gras. Please, you guys aren't like all, you know, buttoned up and stuff like that. I mean, you have a holiday dedicated to like women flashing people to get beads. How prim and proper are you really? (laughs) So, but yeah, I don't know. Do you like Cajun food? Love it. Well, I don't like the weird stuff. Don't give me, you know, frog legs or chicken legs, you know, but like catfish. Yeah, no, thank you. But give me the normal stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I like. I think I told you I, I love to make Cajun food. I'm very good at it. And in mm. the absence of a significant other, I'm more than happy to come back to L.A. and make it for my friends. Wow. Okay. Well, I I miss you, Bree. It's been a few months, and you know I'm I'm alone here in L.A. I know. I'm so sorry. I did. I abandoned you. Yep. Um. I abandoned you, and I, and believe me, Al, I am living to regret it every single day. <laughs> I cannot you know, wait. I, I was looking forward uh, to Christmas here because last year the Scientologists uh, did it up pre-COVID. Oh. They were partying in the streets. They had Christmas celebrations every day 
this year, of course, they're, you know, nowhere to be found. The Scientologists. Yeah, I mean, see, that's like one of those things, too. It's like they're like so evil, but like, goddamn, if they don't throw a good Christmas party. (laughs) Well, it's all part of their plan. It is all part of their plan, but they have like a, they do have a big stronghold in L.A. Like yeah, they, it's very, very popular here. It's uh, a little creepy, to be honest, but hey, to each his own. I know. Well, I mean, and Tom mm-hmm. Cruise is their leader, so like that's all, <laughs> that's all you really have to know. <laughs> so that's why like people, you know, like they act like, like sometimes I do, like you know me, like I'm into like astrology and like the full moon and like all that fun stuff and people act like it's so weird. And I'm like... But we allow, like, Scientology to exist in this country. But you think that's weird? (laughs) I mean, come on, dude. I just feel like it's, like, a little bit hypocritical. You know? Or even, like, you know, like, the Catholics. No one's shaming your... I come from, like, a family that's, like, originally Catholic. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. you guys, like, go and you all drink out of the same glass of wine. Ew, that was gross before COVID. And then you eat styrofoam. And you pretend it's the body of somebody. Like, that's a little weird, you know? Yeah, it's, but it's religion okay. is, is strange. Yeah, it's okay. But no one's shaming you for loving uh, witchcraft, right? Some people do. Some people are like, oh my God, like your astrology. And I'm like, listen, dude, please. <laughs> I mean, I just don't like to be whatever. My Nana is super Catholic. She, I think the other day I was like posting up on Instagram that I wanted to like hook up with Monsignor Kelly and um, like... What was that? Was it on Instagram? No, I did, right? Yeah, no, I was posting on Instagram that I wanted to hook up with Monsignor Kelly. And then I was texting my Nana about it. Who is Monsignor Kelly? Who is he? Yeah. Well, so he he ran or he was like the headmaster or some bullshit. Speaking of Harry Potter, he was like the headmaster or something of Seton Hall Prep where um, one of my best friends went in high school. So that's how I first knew about him. And then, Mm. but then he was also the, like the covering priest at St. Al's. So funny story about Monsignor Kelly, though, is when I was going to prom, I was taking a guy from Seton Hall and you had to get their principal to sign off if you wanted to bring somebody from outside to prom. Really? So Yeah, I guess it was like that's how they did things. So obviously, like me and my friend, we totally forgot. It's the day I need to hand them in. So I go to my friend Brian McGuire, who had excellent penmanship and he would always forge signatures if I needed him to. And I was like, Brian, like, you know, I need you to forge the Monsignor signature. And Mm -hmm. his little Irish Catholic came out and he was like, I can't do it. And I'm like, Brian, you're still going to get into heaven just because you forged (laughs) the Monsignor signature. Like, just sign it. And he was like, no, I'm not going to sign it. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, Brian was like, like, you know, like we used to smoke weed. Like, he, you know, he didn't give a shit Mm -hmm. about anything. But that was the one thing he didn't want to do. He was not going to forge, you know, a man of the cloth's signature. And to this day, I kind of respect him for it. He stood his ground. I don't. You... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you should assign that bad boy and let it be the end of it. Oh, yeah. I'm a great forger, too. Back in high school, everyone would bring me their tests that they would have to bring back to their teachers. Mm-hmm. They'd bring them to me. I would say, you know, show me your parents' signature. I'll, I'll get it down. And I did. I could see that about you. I like mm-hmm. I write like a serial killer. Like my handwriting <laughs> is like Ed Gain. Like you just can't. I don't know why. Some people say it's a sign of brilliance. Other people think it's the sign of a sociopath. I, <laughs> I've seen your handwriting. You have nice handwriting. Don't worry. No. Oh my god. Like maybe if I really try and it's like in the moment. But like if I were writing an essay, like I have no idea how people even graded it. It was like. Yeah. <laughs> it was like somebody was like writing like a hostage note. That's how I write. It's like very frantic and quick. That's, yeah, that's my handwriting. So what can you do? Um, We're coming up on 20 minutes here. What do we want to wrap with today? We went over basically my retirement plans. Um, And Mm. then I guess that was really it, right? Retirement plans, alligators, Scientology, and the Catholic Church. I mean, what more do you want out of an episode? Yeah, well, what's your opinion on, real quick, what's your opinion on the whole Mayweather-Logan fight? Mm. Yes, that is like the talk of the town. What is my opinion on Mayweather-Logan? Um, or, I guess Paul is his last name, right? Yeah, Logan Paul. Logan Paul, yeah, but there's two. There's the, the Jake Paul and then there's Logan Paul. Yeah, Jake I Paul just... fought last week. A lot of people are confused. Jake Paul is the younger one. He's not as famous, but still very famous. Fought Nate Robinson last week. 
Now, upcoming is is uh, Logan Paul, who is uh, the older brother and uh, qu- and a little more famous, and he is going to fight uh, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, honest to God, I don't like him, but I'm afraid that we're going to like witness this guy's death live on camera. <laughs> don't worry. No, that's not going to happen. He's yeah, I know. way, You're bi- like, he's way oh, bigger. He, like, he trains and stuff like that. Like, Yeah, he's way bigger than, than Jake Paul, oh, Logan Paul. I mean, Logan Paul's bigger than Floyd Mayweather, I mean. I know, but it's Floyd Mayweather. He's, like, the number one boxer of the world Yeah, he's world the number one technical. Time. Like, sure, he's he, he has some knockouts, but he's the number one technical boxer of all time. This is going to be a technical win. I, I know it is. It's going to be a very boring match. No, come on, dude. He's going to knock his ass out. Like, that's, like, I don't know. I just feel like, like, I, I you know, I think, I think also, like, to me... Logan Paul is already dumb. So it's like, what is his brain going to be like after he, you know, sustains all that CTE from the flight, like, or the fight with Mayweather? <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah, I think everyone wants that to happen. I Trust me, I would love to see him get knocked out. It's not going to happen. Well, even if he, okay, let's just for the sake of argument say that he doesn't get knocked out. He's still going to be taking all those hits. You know, they're and not that's like, they're not big hits. He's not a, he's not that strong of a guy. Of course, in the grand scale of things, he is. But in the boxing world, he's not that big heavyweight that gives the big punches. He's just not that guy. I don't know. I like I I personally like like I like there was like a lot of talk as to whether or not they keep saying they want to have like an MMA fight. The the Paul brothers they want to fight like an MMA person, and yeah. I'm like that they will die. I mean, because it's not just <laughs> boxing. Like, then you're talking about, you know, like, everything else. Like, I mean... This is like, what they j- do. They train for MMA. They'll be fine. They they wouldn't do it if they weren't trained. I disagree. I feel like it's going to be, like, a lamb out for slaughter. But they don't even give a shit, you know? Like, we're all we're all here debating. Like, they don't give a shit. You know why? Because they're all getting paid. That's oh, what this yeah. is about. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely. Floyd Mayweather is going to make money. Logan Paul is going to make money. Everybody involved, you know, in the sponsorships and, and the bullshit, they're all going to make money. And we're all sitting, we're all going to be sitting home like clowns paying $65 to watch it on pay-per-view. And that's America. That is America, <laughs> that is America in a nutshell. So, but yeah, and I, I'll be one of the clowns watching it. Like I'll pay my 65 because it's like history. We're going to be witnessing dumbass history. So I have to be there. <laughs> That's how I feel. Are you going to watch it? Eh. If, if I could find a, a free stream, I'll throw it on. I, I really don't have that much. I, I would usually go to a party that has it. These days, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so, you know. Well, I'll invite you over. Well, that, well, you know what? We'll do our Cajun food. We'll watch this fight, and then we'll get stoned <laughs> as hell and watch, like, dazed and confused afterwards. There we go. See? And I think that has a perfect note to end on. So until next time, guys, Al and the twins and I and our future alligators send you lots of love. Stay healthy, stay COVID free, and we'll see you back here next time. Whoa!